Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I'm Army Sergeant Matt Cromer. When you think of combat arms training and maintenance, or CADM, you probably think about getting qualified on a weapon. But senior airman Elizabeth Toronto tells us how CADM airmen are responsible for so much more. Ever wonder what's going on in the armory? Staff Sergeant Ruben Salazar gives us a behind the scenes glimpse. For us in particular, why this is, mission is important is that we store a lot of the base weapons for the alternate armory here. And if it weren't for us, we wouldn't be able to do our mission if, if need to be. Whenever we run across a weapon that is broken or doesn't meet standards when we, whenever we do an inspection, if we can't fix ourselves, we will turn it in. The um, main reason we do that is so that way that weapon doesn't get issued out because if it is issued out, there could be a possible injury to that person if that weapon is, is used. So as a combat arms instructor, uh, I feel it's very important and I enjoy it quite a bit. I take pride in uh, teaching and also uh, working on weapons is something I enjoy, knowing that the weapon is functioning properly so if anyone ever does need to use their weapon, I know and I'm confident that they will be able to do so. Reporting from Coonsan Air Base, I'm Senior Airman Elizabeth Toronto. Airmen at the Armory exemplify excellence in their field and continue to serve as a first line of defense against weapon mishaps and failures. We very rarely get to appreciate the heroes that shape our country. Senior Airman Taylor West introduces us to a retired general who is often compared to the likes of George Washington. Born in Pyongyang, the current capital of North Korea, General Pak Sun Yup went south of the 38th parallel after World War II. He then joined the Republic of Korea Constabulary, currently known as the ROC Army. After that, the rest was history. So he was uh, 29 years old uh, when the Korean War began, and he was a division commander. Uh, his division held the area around Taebudong, which was really the North Koreans' main effort to break through the Pusan perimeter. And uh, some of the bloodiest battles of the entire Korean War took place during the defense of the Pusan perimeter. In one instance, his division launched a counterattack, a piece of the uh, key real estate had changed hands 13 times in one day. And when he launched the last counterattack, he led from the front. And before the, he gave the order to attack, he told his men if he personally turned back for them to shoot him. So um, talking about leading from the front gives a, a new definition to, uh, of leading from the front. During the defense of the Pusan perimeter, it was the only instance in the Korean War where large-sized U.S. forces were placed under the command and control of a ROC Army field commander. Leading numerous battles throughout the Korean War, General Peck's divisions were often mistaken for U.S. troops by the North Korean forces because his divisions were so organized in their tactics and tenacious in their forward movements. Using military terminology, I would qualify General Peck as a combat multiplier. And General Peck had a unique and large skill set, but above all else, the thing that he brought to the table was effective leadership. You have to consider that without people like my grandfather, without my grandfather especially, that South Korea could have ended up as a dictatorship uh, like North Korea and living under the oppressive rulers. Uh, and consider that today Korea is a free nation, you know, with a uh, very prosperous, uh, with a lot of freedoms that we enjoy. Um, I think you know, people like my grandfather and American soldiers as well have made an important contribution to that. Peck is truly an, a, a national treasure. He is a living bridge to, to history. He was the consummate professional soldier. When speaking to General Peck about the past compared to the present and how he feels about the Republic of Korea today, his humble and kind nature truly comes out. It has been 62 years since the Korean War ended. Most of the people from that time passed away already, and new generations are coming over. Many people today in Korea may not know the hard times we had to go through back in the days to make this nation prosper. But I hope young people would dedicate themselves to make this country flourish like we did. And growing up, my grandfather, you know, was always grandpa, or and Harabaji wasn't, uh, you know, General Peck to the same extent. He was always uh, very humble, uh, very, you know, cared about others. Uh, he didn't 
you know, do what he did, didn't become a national hero, he didn't ask to be that, he didn't ask to become a general. He stepped up to the plate and um, did what the job required. Um, obviously, I'm very pleased that the country has rewarded him as a result. Now celebrating his 95th birthday, General Peck is the honorary commanding general of the 8th Army and serving as a constant reminder of not only the importance of U.S. and ROC Army alliance, but a reminder of how things used to be. Senior Airman Taylor West, Yongsan, Korea. General Peck was also the Republic of Korea's Minister of Transportation, helping pave the way for the Korean transportation system that we all know today. Usually Christmas is a time of year that all families come together and share their gifts. But for some people, it can be something they don't normally get a chance to enjoy. Service members from Special Operations Command Korea, or SOC Corps, host a Christmas party for local Korean orphans at the Yongsan Kaminsky Center. For a first Christmas in Korea, Captain Daniel Toman is filled with happiness from sharing the holiday with the children. We call them our SOC kids because of SOC Corps and our orphanages that we sponsor. Today is their Christmas party. So we invited them here to U.S. Army Garrison Yongsan to celebrate Christmas with us. Our orphanages mean so much to us and just being able to celebrate the holiday with them. I know it brings, it brings me a lot of joy. I know it brings all of the SOC Corps members and the FRG members a lot of happiness. The kids are not only treated to an American Christmas lunch, but also many wonderful presents from Santa. For Jo Garen, this Christmas becomes a unique memory for the holidays. I'm so happy right now to get the Christmas gift that I wanted, because actually it's not usual for me to get a gift on Christmas. Even though I can't speak English well, we could play along well together. I hope this party is held next year again so other kids can enjoy it too. Katusa Sergeant Harman Zhang, Yongsan, Korea. Everything that was prepared for the Christmas party was donated by SOC Corps members for each of the orphans. When you visit a country, it's important to learn about their traditions and culture. I'm going to take you to a special cafe with just that. Nestled in between skyscrapers of Seoul, there's a small cafe that you can visit and have an interesting Korean experience. Hi, I'm here at Hey Korea Cafe, and these beautiful Korean women are about to show me a little bit about tradition. In this little cafe, you get to dress up in traditional okay. <laughs> Korean clothes called hanbok and get the chance to take pictures in them. Getting my traditional Korean photos taken, I believe. <laughs> Besides the dressing up in traditional clothes, there are other activities that you can try out. Cafe manager Ki Ji Yoon tells us about the different experiences you can have while at the cafe. The basic activities that we provide here at Hey Korea Cafe, besides dressing up in traditional clothes, are learning traditional Korean games, learning the basics of Korean language, and writing your own name in Korean while at it. Also, with Korean traditional paper, you get to create a special card. Last but not least, we have food experience programs as well, where you get to make kimchi or gangjang of your choice with other people and learn about Korean culture while making these traditional foods. So right now, everything is set up, and we're about to make what? Kanjong? OK. So I mean, I did OK, I will say, with uh, the writing, the Korean writing. Uh, but we'll see how good I can do with this. I like to cook, so we'll see. <laughs> Gangjong is a traditional Korean confectionery made with glutinous rice, honey, and malt boiled with a mixture of different grains. You can roll them or use your palms to flatten them when they are hot and soft. Then you leave them in a cool area to let them harden. After they have solidified, you cut them into bite-sized pieces. Army Sergeant Matt Cromer, Seoul, Korea. <laughs> the owner of the cafe is the 17th grandson of the great King Sejong, creator of the Korean language Hangul. That was your Around the Peninsula for this week. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening. of Special Operations Command Korea. The Chief and I invited some very special people to join us. And sir, I think our kids just gave a great example of amazing teamwork. SOC Corps is committed to building a better tomorrow for the most important people of all, our children. So enjoy this holiday season. Hey kids, can you help us out one more time? Happy, Happy New Year! Year!